Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Sunday, January the 16th. The year is 2022. Let's talk trading. Weekly open and gap. As always, these videos are for educational purposes. Only your results may differ from mine. And we're about halfway through the uh, trading month of January. So let's just remember that each and every trade should have our risk management stop loss in place because we don't want to lose any more in any one particular trade than we're willing to lose. And we want to make sure we're engaging our brain management. No fear, no regret, no pain. And just as important, we want to make sure we have our money management in place so we take profit before the market takes it back. And looking at the weekly chart, we have some gaps that have not filled. The pound being one of them. The pound gap down, but it looks like it's about to fill the gap going to the upside. We're putting in the opening range for the week. We're 142 pips above the high of the opening range of the month. For the year, we are 149 pips above the yearly open. And you can see we're above the weekly inside bar that occurred nine weeks ago, but we're still within that monthly inside bar. Now let's just uh, take a look at what, what that looks like. You can see it here. So are we gonna break the upside or are we gonna break the downside? We'll just have to wait and see which way it breaks. And we are a little over five hours into the trading day. And so far, no pairs have hit 90 pips in range. Or sorry, 100 pips. We do have a 90 here, the pound New Zealand, the one I like to call the new beast. And very interesting. It seems like most pairs are above their open at the moment. And let's see, I need to switch this back to the one hour time frame. I'm looking at the um, buy zone. Um, in fact, I even traded a short on the weekly uh, open crossover. It just looked too ripe. I just had to take it. Plus, it was heading toward the pivot. And it looks like we may have just covered that gap. So let's see if price wants to reverse down to the pivot. Uh, range too low for the rats. Only 14 pip range at the moment. And. Okay, I must have. Looked at something wrong. Where did I see the. Why did I think the daily pivot was below? What did I look at? Oh, that's the weekly pivot, not the daily. That's what um that's what got me thrown off. So, we're heading towards the daily pivot. So price near S1, we wants to go long. Price near the pivot, it's looking to short. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Monthly pivot still has missed. Weekly pivot, we haven't hit it. And the daily pivot, we haven't hit it. So we've got a daily above and a weekly below. We'll have to wait and see who's stronger. Looks like 22 pip above the weekly. 23 here and daily we're down 15 16 at the moment so far we've missed it by 14 pips we are in the lower wick zone of the previous day only 3.2 pips to, to the breakout you can see 
here on the statistics, closing outside of the wick zone 73% of the time. And let's see, but we really need to switch back over to actually what I did set it for the daily. So you can see 73% of the time price closed out of the wick zone over the last 1000 days. That's four trading years. And taking a look at the uh, range board here. Looking at the weekly, we're just starting out, but last week we had that big over above average week, 217 pips at the uh, 66 percentile. So will it follow it with two in a row? That's what happened the last time. So far, no breakouts. And we're just starting, so there's not much distance here speak of at the moment and looking at the uh, price action sweet spots with the Walmart lines and as you can see once again 14 pip range on the day during this time of day there's really not much happening so we're about ready to break out of the previous h1 high Oh, and let's see, we've got an inside bar in the last four hours. So looking to break out either to the upside or downside. That's what that indicator is. In case you're curious, TRO multimeter inside bar. On the lower high, higher low. Uh, there was a nice trade to be had actually a couple times and one, two, three, four times to take that trade for profit. Now, the first couple of times would have only been a pip or two, but depending on how heavy you're trading, um, that could be putting hundreds of dollars uh, in your pocket. Oh, and I uh, I had a question for uh, Michal, um, and I asked him, what size do you have to trade to be a big boy? And basically he said, you know, they've got accounts, you know, they're, they're trying to move literally billions of dollars. And he says, what they do is, is they, um, you know, if they want to buy a million, they'll just wipe out all the liquidity at a certain area to, to get that, to fill that trade. So that's why you might see price move steadily. A big order comes in and it just takes out all the liquidity. And then price stops when that order has been filled. And just looking at the higher low lower high chart. I'm sorry, this I'm, um this is this is the highs and lows that haven't been crisscrossed. I'm so used to looking at the other chart. And I've got the training wheels indicator. So we've got a breakout on the H4. So it's saying, you know, caution if you want to reverse against it. But for the weekly and the daily, it just says wait because there are uh, no breakout. And the way I wrote that indicator, oh, where is it? The training wheels. You can control the message yourself. I always think if I can, if you're hard coding something, if you're a coder, uh, turn it into an input. That way the user um, can do it themselves if they want to change. So try and I try to make these indicators as flexible as possible. But it's amazing um, how many uh, traders don't look at the input stages. It's like, hey, well, you, if you go to the inputs, you can change that. And I'm not just talking about my indicators. I see it all over the forums. So this week coming up, I think we're going to continue talking about problem solving. And in, in fact, one trader um, wanted me to uh, explain how to uh, trade your way out of a losing position. But 
And I cautioned him. I said, you know, the thing is, take the loss and just make it back. Because I, I read something and it made sense. It was um, basically saying that you really can't trade your way out of a losing position. Over the long haul, it's just not going to work. It, it's basically throwing good money after bad. I'll have to bring up the quote. Um, because it's just not going to work. Um, you now, the money management, the risk management is just so key, so fundamental. Because one of the things I know when I, you know, first started out and gotten indicators, you know, you, I use an indicator, I'd lose or barely win. Then it's like, I want to change the numbers like on MACD and, and the Bollinger Bands and RSI. You know, looking for those magic numbers and those magic settings that that's going to make the difference. And the reality is it doesn't. It's so funny when I look back. I have to laugh at myself because um, I was following in the uh, traditional trading um, theory or uh, education, and it just it didn't work for me. It might work for some people. It just didn't work for me. So, and somebody was asking, how long did it take me to get away from the squiggly lines? And I think it was somewhere after about four years. I mean, I literally spent a year when, back in my trade station days. It's like the weekends. I mean, I put in anywhere from eight to 16 hours a day coding and testing and trying to get all those numbers right. And that's when I finally just said, you know what, this is just not working. And that's when I came up with the buy zone and the rest is kind of history from there. It's like been horizontal lines, even though I um, am working again with indicator two only because um, I am doing something um, that I want to give it a give the indicator to a go because if it work because it does work um, if I get everything right and basically follow the signals um, can definitely uh, do some damage to the market it's just one of those things where you have to take pretty much every trade um, don't overthink and you can just see the results so if you've got the um, TRO build or actually any of the TRO builds, you've got TRO um, IND2, that's indicator two. Um, and the thing is, it is based on a squiggly, it's based on the EMA5. But it seems to work more often than not. And I've been trading it on the uh, M5 chart, using it there, and it gives a pretty good, pretty good signal. Um, I'll probably show a chart or two uh, sometime this week um, and you'll just have to see it for yourself see if you're uh, yeah I'm not asking you to trade it but it's just something that I did way back in my stock trading days and you know there's a couple of guys that they just loved it they just swore by it and so I've dusted it off from time to time it's mainly if you want to stay in the trade longer. You know, normally like when Walmart and I trade, in fact, I was asking him the other day, it's like, you know, how long are you in a trade normally on average? It's like, if it's a win, it's usually <laughs> about 15 seconds or so, you know, maybe a minute. But, you know, if you're hoping for it to uh, come back or, you know, if, if you're having to fight your way out, you know, then you're in the trade for minutes and, you know, being in a trade for minutes, especially, um, you know, if you don't have at least 10 pips in your pocket um, or on the table, I should say, it seems like an eternity. So, fellow traders, I hope you had a fun, safe weekend. Glad to have you back. And remember, when you're trading this week, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one over and out. Oh, by the way, um, I did send out batch one of the TRO 2022 donational indicators. So thank you again for all your support. Much appreciated.